Welcome back to the channel. We are here under my Rust Dumpster 97 Blazer, also known as Johansson on this channel. There's a playlist for this thing, which I'll throw a card for right over there, as well as down in the description for you, so you can go catch up on the horror show. Right now, we're in the midst of one of the most optimistic moments in automotive history. I'm about to pull the rear cover off of this thing with a drain pan here under it in the hilarious notion that there's going to be any oil in this thing at all. When this thing came home two years ago, that wheel seal over there was blown out. But the previous owner didn't know it, and I didn't know it until I pulled the brakes all apart. Also, pretty sure the pinion seal is blown out. Normally when you see one that's just coated in grease like that, that means it's all leaked out of the pinion seal. So I'm betting at most we have about that much oil in the bottom of this thing. But all the same, the time has come to replace that wheel seal. The only way to replace the wheel seals is to pull the axles out. The only way to do that is to take the cover off. So, I have optimistically placed my pan here, thinking maybe we'll get some oil out of it. Anybody want to bet if this is the first time this has ever been done? Okay, that's bad. So at least this guy over here, which is behind the anti-sway bar, is so tight that a wrench just rounds it off. The other ones are so greasy, probably going to have to clean them a little before we even try. Saving grease here might be that the oil kept them from becoming too rusty. I don't think so, though. They look pretty nasty. Those, I'm hoping I can get on with my impact, and the impact will just rattle them out. So far, so good. Normally, I would also pop the fill plug before I remove this back cover, but it's empty anyway. It doesn't matter. We'd have to figure out a way to put oil, even if the fill plug wouldn't come out. Leave that center one chilling a little bit just so the cover doesn't run away on us eventually. This is a brake line I put on it two years ago. It is now in my way. Ah, boy. This is all bad news. Do we want to try a bigger impact? Well, I think the first thing I'm going to have to do is just hose it down for a while with some penetrating oil. My oil of choice for the day is going to be what I call the elixir. Sometimes I call it the potion. It's half ATF and half acetone. It seems to work pretty good. So I'll probably give that a little while. Maybe shoot it a few more times and we'll come back to it and see if we can get any of those bolts out. I'm going to hit them with the potion one more time. And I had to re-air my potion bottle here. You might notice it's a little more foamy now. That's why. And I'm thinking the foam is a good thing. Nope. Nope. Got one. And then they got these guys that I can't get on because of the sway bar. That 13 fits super freaking loose. But it's that one. I'm going to grab a half and maybe a 12 and see if either of those fit better. All right, so here's half. Half is 12.7 millimeters, by the way. And it fits like garbage. Let's try this 12. Yeah, 12 doesn't quite want to fit. Well, I think the move here is going to be a long ratchet. Alrighty, that's good news. Also good news. Ah, hits keep on coming. That's awesome. I don't know if I'll be able to get on my problem guys or not. Barely. Okay. And this guy we already slipped off of once, so we're starting to leak a little gear oil. All right. I think you can see how rusty those bolts are, which is pretty crazy for what they are. I'm hoping this rear cover is in usable condition. I'm questioning it. Okay. Tap, 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 eh? Maybe not. Nope. I don't know if Papa GM would have glued these on or used gaskets. Probably glue. Okay, we got some oil that looks really dark. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, good news, I'm not seeing any water in it. I am seeing some streaking, which is almost certainly metal, and that was way not enough of oil. Yeah, there's a pretty good illustration of what the oil level was, and you can see it was, when you look at it, it's lower than the axle tube. It's right at the bottom of the axle tube because all the oil leaked out of the wheel seals. And also, you know, lower than the pinion seal for the same reason. I don't know where the fill plug on this guy is, but I would expect it to be at least this high. So it ain't doing too good. A little bit of good news. I think our cover here has got plenty of meat left in it still. Backlash is actually really nice. That's cool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my vacuum gun here. And since this thing's jacked up in the rear, it's on an angle, so all the fluid wouldn't drain out anyway. I'm going to suck out everything I can from the bottom. I also already hit this with about half a can of brake clean, so that'll help. I'm just going to hose it down with brake clean as I'm going here. And I'll get the fluid gun back out and suck up the remainder out of the bottom. So what I'm going to need to do, there's a little bolt right here I need to take out, and then I'm going to need to get this cross pin out. So actually I need to rotate it back a little bit more yet. What I should be doing is rotating this on the drive shaft up there. But as you can see, that would require a lot of effort. To my shock, the gears don't look like the worst thing I've ever seen. You can tell they got plenty of miles on them, but they don't look awful. It looks like this did have a gasket on it, so that it's almost certainly the first time this has been done. Yeah, there's the gasket right there. Normally when people service these, they just silicone them on. I like gaskets. But it, almost no one does it that way. So yeah, odds are good we're the first people to see in here since GM built it. Well, next thing to do is get that bolt pulled out of there. So I can get this cross pin out, which is disturbingly loose. Maybe that's normal, I'm not sure. We get that bolt out so we get the cross pin out, we get the C-clips out, slide the axles out. Uh, both 5 16 and 8 millimeter fit this thing like crap. So we're just going to go with what we got. Fit crappy, but crappy was... Oh, there, there goes our pin. It's like our bolt is just going to chill out in there, which is pretty much fine with me. So now I'm probably going to have to go take it back out of park, just so it isn't the worst problem of my life to get the C-clips out. Plus, I'm going to get the drain pan out and get it set up so you guys can actually see what's up. Alrighty, so there's the hole where the pin fell out of. I need to spin the carrier a little so I can get a little better access to the C-clips. Again, I should be doing this on the drive shaft, but I did just screw up everything with my setup here. And all you guys can see is that stupid sway bar. So the idea here is those are the two nubs of the axle. I should be able to grab the axle flange out here and push it in, and that will push in this way. And it did. And you can see that C-clip that's on there just fell down. We want to get that all the way out. And there it is. And there will be one like that on the other side too. But now our axle shaft is free to come all the way out. So the goal here is to just pull the axle out because there's a seal behind it is what we're after. It should just pop right out of there. And the side gears may fall on the inside. That's okay. There we go. Ooh, that's bad. Looks like we have run this for a long, long time with no oil. Because there's a huge groove in the axle right there. <sighs> that probably means our axle bearings are torched too. Surprisingly, there is some oil out here. So I went ahead and pulled the axle out of the other side too, and you can see there's significant wear on it, but it isn't nearly as bad as this side. So I'm thinking this guy I'm probably going to reuse, uh, bearing in mind that I'm not looking to drive this thing forever. Uh, 10,000 miles, that's the goal. This guy you can see is significantly more grooved. I'm going to order a repair bearing for this side, which actually takes the bearing and moves it over so it rides on a fresh part of the axle. Uh, those don't tend to work awesome, but again, 10,000 miles. What I probably should do here is, well, one, cut my losses with the truck and just send this thing to the junkyard. Or, two, uh, try and find an entire used axle assembly that's in better condition. It wouldn't be hard to do better than this one, but that opens up a whole bunch of other expenses too. Like, uh, I promise you would have to cut all the U-bolts off to get it off the springs. We've already got rear suspension problems to deal with. Um, but the right way of doing things would probably be just to source a whole new axle assembly or a whole different axle assembly. I can buy new axle shafts for about 70 bucks a piece and then have to put about $20 of wheel studs in them, plus about a $20 wheel bearing, plus a 5 to $10 axle seal. So what, you're talking like 200 bucks a side-ish? And this truck's just way not worth that. 
So we're over here looking in from the passenger side, and after a genuinely disturbing amount of cleaning, I finally found the frickin' fill plug for the thing. I already hit it with a little bit of the potion, but all the same, I'm not gonna front on it at all. This is my half-inch impact gun with a 3 8 adapter and a 3 8 extension in it, because that is a 3 8 sized plug. I do have the impact turned down. I'm just gonna try it this way to see if it'll come free, if I can even get it on there. Yes, popped right on out. Good news. So there was our cause for concern, getting that rusty chisno out of there. And this thing pretty well illustrates on its own just the condition of everything under this truck. The threads that are hanging out of it, you can see just how full of absolute crap they are. That this plug is just gross. Yeah, that's like this whole vehicle. I probably uh, shouldn't have brought this thing, but here we are. And since indeed we are here, <laughs> let's go ahead and tackle this wheel seal. The other side is where the axle saver bearing is going to go, and it comes with its own kind of seal. So we'll worry about that when it shows up. This can be one of two different kinds. There's, I guess, a K-type axle, which is like the Canadian Blazer, and I think that's what this one is. So what I did is I just ordered both seals from Amazon. I will link both in the description, but the ones I actually need just showed up. So those are the two Tempkin part numbers that could be. For my application, 8660S is the wrong one. You can see mine has a flanged lip on it, and this one does not. So these get sent back, and 710166 is the guy I want. You can see it's got that flange on it. It should just pop on like so after we get our old guy out of there. I have my trusty seal puller, which if you guys don't have one of these, you should totally get one. I'll link it down in the description. The way it works is just a hook that goes up inside the seal, and you just bump the handle, allegedly. And I'll pop the seal out. And this guy has been replaced before because GM does not silicone them in. So that is probably why the one on the other side is bad and this one is fine is because this one's been done before. So I will need to clean that up. Bearing actually doesn't, at a glance, seem too bad. I am going to full bore not worry about it too much. Spend a little time cleaning up this interface so I too can put some RTV on it so it doesn't leak past the edge of the bearing. And we'll get it put back in there. Actually, that may not be RTV. That might just be like paint because it's coming off pretty dang easy. So where the Timkins just got this orange paint. In fact, maybe that is a sealer. I don't know. I always seal stuff like this just because I do. So I'm not going to stop today. So this is a new one. Went to get my RTV out of my box and the freaking cap broke off <laughs> while it was in there, which sucks. It's like a nearly brand new tube. Hopefully I can just like mine the core out of it and actually have like good RTV down inside here. No, that's coming out like, ouch. It's coming out like through the side and stabbing me in the hand. Does any RTV come out? It does. Okay, good enough. We're just going to do that to harvest what I need for this job. And then I guess I'm going to throw this tube away. Oops. So that amount should be more than enough. It's going to go along the outside, just like so. You don't have to use a heap here. Although, you know, I have a whole tube to use if I want. Alrighty, so something about like so is usually how I like to roll. I try not to get any on the actual seal itself. Get my tiny hammer. And just work around the outside. In fact, you guys are a little too close for comfort. There we go. And the nice thing about the RTV is it'll squish out around there when it's set, when you got it all the way set it in, set in there. Yeah, like right there, it just happened. I might get a little block of wood there just to finish setting it. Get a little close to my work. Whereas it turns out a giant block of wood. It's like way too long. Wipe our excess off so we don't leave a sloppy job behind. Like it's going to matter to the junkyard this thing goes to. Although the way used car prices are, this thing might actually be worth something, which is a terrifying thought. Finishing touch. I'm just going to take some brake caliper grease, which is fully compatible with rubber. And I'm just going to grease up the seal so when I slide the axle in, it's not sliding in there dry. And this stuff will mix together with the differential oil. A few grams of grease isn't going to hurt anything. Fly right in the toad. But it will definitely help things. Speaking of, I think now we can slide that axle back in if we want. I should probably clean up the inside of the differential again before I do that, because I threw grinding media and crap all over when I was cleaning up the gasket surface, but... I think we're done on this side. Alrighty, so I spent uh, way too much time getting that cleaned up. 
also went around the outside and just hit the, the heavy, heavy rust. So if this thing starts seeping oil, I can see it reasonably soon. Uh, these covers aren't that expensive to replace, but this is a budget operation, so I don't want to just replace it just because. Once I get it all bolted up, I may get under here and either just pit it with some oil or maybe paint it quick, something just to try and keep it holding on. Also found evidence that I am not the first person to get in here because some doofus bent it up in the past. Uh, that's what happens when you get on it with a screwdriver and start prying. You will notice I did not do that. I took a real thin putty knife and just tapped it on in there. And I think I started over here more anyway, so pretty sure that wasn't me. Either way, pretty sure that cover's gonna be okay. I also spent a quick moment cleaning up this driver's side axle that is just roached. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just take some sandpaper and try and take the heavy edges off of this thing. Uh, more or less just to try and clean that up so it'll slip past our new bearing. What I don't wanna do is get on this, which is where our new bearing is gonna ride. You can see that's still nicely machined. This is some 100 grit, which is very, very aggressive, but I have a pretty nasty lip here. So I'm just gonna work right along that lip with the 100 grit until I get the lip knocked off and I can, I can feel those pretty easily. When I'm done with that, I have some 400 here and I can go all the way up to 2000 if I want. I have up to 2000 in stock, hoping we don't need to do that. So on this guy, I actually did have to take to it with a file on this edge to get everything smooth and I actually did end up going over it with 2000. But I think it'll end up being okay, or at least as okay as something ridiculous like this is going to be. In reality, this axle should not be reused. I probably should spend the $800 and rebuild the whole rear end of this thing, but the truck isn't worth what the rear end would be, so we're going to move along. I can't think of any reason to not get this passenger side axle slid back on in there. I'm going to try and take it easy past the seal, just because I don't want to tear it up. I'm kind of trying to support it a little with my left hand. It's gonna to get to be fun when we get to the carrier in the middle because we gotta line up with one of those side gears. Hopefully without pushing it out. I can, I'm on one or I'm on something. There we go. And I can actually hear that gasket make, or the wheel seal make good contact with the Axel, so I think we're good. So I think we're done here. I think my next move is going to be to crawl on under this disaster and do the pinion seal. It's kind of up in the air whether or not I even wanted to try and do that because the way those pinions set up is there's a crush collar inside and once you crush it, it stays crushed and you crush it with the nut that tightens it on. So once that nut is tight the first time, you're really supposed to tear everything apart and replace that crush sleeve and then torque everything down again then the nuts tight again well we're not going to do that and i've had bad luck doing it this way before where you just take that nut off take the yoke off pop the gasket put a new one in i've had problems with having like a howling gear set up after that but this thing is such a pile of crap i don't think it's going to matter i think this thing's going to be loud and howl and everything else no matter what i do but having the oil kept in it is probably better than having the oil fall out of it i think i'm going to put the uh, drum and wheel back on this side too just as a kind of a safety precaution if anything just so there's a wheel back on one side if it should happen to fall which I don't think so but whatever and I don't have the c-clip in this axle yet so I'm not going to tighten these lugs all the way up because if I do it'll pull this axle forward and I won't be able to get the c-clip in so I'm just going to make sure there's more than a few threads on there you know just as a this is just kind of a small safety precaution anyway so and here we are back under the belly of the beast this is the fun era of GM where you can never be sure if these are metric or standard fasteners. An 11 seems to fit these pretty good. And a 716 seems to fit them okay. So we're going to go with our 11 here. I'm just going to dip this with a little WD-40 just to maybe help it get moving. I'm intentionally not using the potion here because I don't want acetone on my universal joint rubber parts. This is just a big pry bar. And the idea here isn't really to pry it apart. Well, maybe I can. A lot of the time you can just get in there and kind of bump it and it'll flibble flop around. What you don't want to do is start taking a hammer to stuff and beating on things because you'll bend up a drive shaft and you can bend up these tubes easier than you think you can. And I've got to think this is not the original rear universal joint just due to mileage, but this guy is certainly stuck in there. Yeah, like I said, sometimes you could just like get in there and just give her a little wiggle and they'll pop out. Doesn't look like that's going to be our luck today. 
All right, well, after the second time of me punching you right in the face, I'm just gonna give up and keep you out of my way. I did just get it though. All it took was punching you guys in the face a few times and we got her on the way out. I don't know how well it's gonna show up, but that bottom cap is now free of the universal. Our top guy is still locked in pretty good. Well, you get the idea. It looks a lot like just prying on stuff until things come loose. So I got her out of there, but we got a situation where we need to be careful. The cap up there just twisted and let me get the U-joint out, but the cross is down here without its cap. There are a whole bunch of little needle bearings up there in the cap that we do not want to drop, or at least we don't want to lose, which in the circumstance I'm in would be about the same thing. So there's so much crap on the floor that I'll never find one if I drop it. So this guy is so rusted in here that it was kind of like I'd rather die than let go. And that is basically what happened. So now I gotta try and kajigger him out of there without screwing anything up, I hope. Okay, I think, I think we might be all right. Yep, got him. And there you can see all those little needle bearing elements down in there. Those are uncaged. So they are just held in there right now with grease. So what I need to do is make sure I'm not missing any. Looks like I've got them all. So before anything gets worse, Slip that guy right back on there, just like it never happened. So the next thing I need to do is spend quite a bit of time uh, just cleaning all that crap up, cleaning all the old grease and oil off of everything just so I can work on it cleanly. Because once this guy comes off, there's gonna be a wide open hole in the front of that differential. And I don't wanna drop all that crap in there if I can avoid it. I went ahead and popped the drive shaft out because it was just gonna be in my way regardless. It is just a slip yoke into the transfer case. So it's basically just like any uh, two wheel drive uh, rear wheel drive vehicle you just pull it out and out she comes it also gave me a good chance to kind of inspect these universal joints the one on this side actually feels okay it's uh loose without being too loose and all that good stuff if you have never felt one of these it's good or bad it's kind of hard to just describe our guy on the other end however is a different story this guy like right there is definitely tight uh, the caps feel fine these would be the caps that were stuck in in a minute ago but when i get it to not right there, they're very clearly tight. I've contemplated maybe trying to lift these. You know, I'll just pull this one off to demonstrate and to observe. Nah, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I was thinking about trying to like pull this boot back to shoot some grease in there, but I don't think that would work. Uh, what I think is gonna happen, this will probably last the 10,000 miles I need it to, and if it doesn't, we'll spend the 12 bucks to get an AutoZone replacement and worry about it then. Uh, what I will do while this is out is I'll take some sandpaper to these caps and just clean them up so they're a little easier to deal with if we need to pull it out again. And I did spend some time getting all this stuff cleaned up fairly well. And you may be able to just barely see that white stripe. I just took a paint marker and marked the yoke, the nut, and the pinion shaft so I can hopefully get them set back on about the same way they came off and hopefully not much tighter. Right now there's basically no turning resistance on that thing, which is not good. But at the same time, you know, what am I going to do? So this is one of those deals where you guys are going to be in my way for sure. So I'm going to need a hand to hold that still and a hand to run the impact gun. And just for your reference, this takes an inch and a quarter socket. So I got her off there. It was not too much fun. Uh, nut wasn't really a big deal. There's a little better look at the paint line I put on it. There's a washer under that nut, which was also not a big deal. But getting our dude himself there off was kind of a challenge. You can probably see down in those splines in the inside there's like a corrosion and you can actually like pick out flakes of crap out of there so there's some sort of rust or something going on there's maybe a little better view of it just all the junk that's built up in there so pro tip have yourself a nice brass hammer of a decent size around to use uh, this one's just a harbor freight two pounder but i will try and find one on amazon to link for you a uh, great tool to have i did inflict a little bit of damage right there that was with a pry bar I didn't really think I was prying that hard on it. I was just trying to apply a little bit of a pressure, but I guess I did. So I'm probably just gonna take a punch and a hammer and just pop that out a little bit. I somewhat suspect I wouldn't even need to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm just gonna spend some time with a brass brush and try and clean all that crap out of there. Usually on a vehicle with high miles this high and with a pinion leak, I would not bother to try and reuse this yoke because what happens, you can probably see that polished line right there. What happens is where the seal runs, it'll actually wear these down and then even a brand new seal will leak and there's nothing you can do about it except buy a new yoke. 
Or sometimes you can buy a repair sleeve, which is just like a sheet metal collar that drives over there. And so then you just have a sheet metal ring instead of this guy here. The last time I looked into those things, they're called speedy sleeves. Uh, they cost basically as much as a whole new yoke did. So that's not something I would worry about. Uh, next issue is going to be to get our new seal installed. And hey, that's, uh, that's totally the wrong seal. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. I guess I'll have to look into that some more. Yeah, I don't know how that could possibly be the right seal. But this is supposed to look just like the wheel seals that we already did. So this should be tied up against there instead of this big freaking giant hole we have. But anyway, the idea here is going to have to be when I get back under the thing, I'll have to hit around the ring of this thing with a punch and start trying to deform it in on itself because I can't use my seal puller on it because there's a pinion in the middle of it. So it's just a matter of basically a screwdriver and hammer to deform it to the point where you can pop it out of there. So sure enough, I ordered the wrong part. Uh, it looks like this truck's available with, I think, uh, seven and five eighths rear end and an eight and a quarter rear end. And I ordered the seal for the eight and a quarter and what we need is the seven and five eighths size, whatever. So seals are on the way. While we're just in a holding pattern waiting for parts, I just spent some time and cleaned up a bunch of this stuff just with a wire wheel on my die grinder. You can see I got in here and cleaned all this stuff up, cleaned the straps up, cleaned the caps up. Just so in, you know, 300 miles or whatever, when this universal blows up, which it still feels, you know, awful. Like, in fact, there's probably a visual representation of the way it feels. It just gets hard right there. It's not actually hitting anything right there. You, it just, it's binding. So that's not good. But anyway, so in 12 minutes when that thing blows up, it should be easy to take this stuff back apart to replace it. And I did also clean all the splines out on this thing. You can see there's still some crap in there. That stuff is actually all just like dirt or maybe beach sand that somehow got down in there and hardened into almost like a grout. Really not a good time to get that stuff out. I have a feeling, especially since this thing has a hitch on it, that the one of the previous owners had a boat or a jet ski or something and probably dunked the rear axle of this thing several times, uh, pulling it in and out of the water, which at least around here we only have fresh water or this would have rusted hopelessly. I would have never got it apart. But I think all the sediment and stuff must have got in there eventually and just stuck in there and glued it on. So parts have arrived, but at the moment I have no desire to get underneath this thing and mess with that pinion anymore. So let's see if we can get this wheel seal and wheel bearing out of this side over here on the driver's side where our axle was in the worst shape. And there we go. And I think, ooh, you can like see all the sludge in there. That's bad. But I think uh, these things just smack out of there. So don't believe there's any magic or mystery to it. I'm just gonna feed my slide hammer in there. And this is just a Harbor Freight guy that I'm not confident I'm using correctly, but we'll just see if it comes out anyway. There we go. I just had the cone of this thing reversed. There's only one picture in the manual and it's for the exterior setup. So of course I put it together wrong. All right, there we go. Hopefully I didn't get it so cocked up before that it won't move now. Oh, and I'm just beating that race right out of it. This doesn't seem right. There are specific setups for bearing pulling that I did actually just buy earlier today, but it won't be here for a couple days, of course. I want to get this done, so. Oh, so I'm just breaking the entire race off. Awesome. Man, I don't even know how you would do this without a slide hammer. Neat. Eh, finally. I think anyway. We get it all? Yeah. Something else I'm noticing is one of the rollers ended up in there. It's probably a good idea. Actually, several of them did. Probably a good idea to count these up. Make sure I get them all. Because a roller going through our differential would uh, not make things good. Yeah, I count 11. That's probably not a good number. 11, 12, 13. 13, huh? I'm missing two of them. Yeah, see that little reflection at the top of the hole? That's a roller. Oh, two of them. Cool, that's 13. Also, wow, two of them. Again, I guess I'm glad we'll look. I looked. I will check the bottom of the pumpkin when I get there, just to be super double sure. And it just so happens I do have another regular wheel bearing because somebody shipped me the wrong one. And it also has 13 elements, so we're good. We have 13 rollers. Looks like I did gouge it up just a little bit down at the bottom with my barbarism there. I think it'll be okay. 
the thing we need to do now is examine our replacement bearing setup versus the tube because I'm not totally feeling how the thing is supposed to work. I've never done one of these before. This is our guy. If you weren't getting the idea how this works, it is supposed to take the bearing that was sitting here and just pull it outboard so it rides on a new part of the axle. Thing I'm seeing though, this thing's kind of funky. It's got an inner seal, an outer seal, and this O-ring. Normally these bearings are lubricated with axle grease or axle oil from the differential. And I was worried that this thing would not install deep enough, but I think it's gonna be fine. I know that they're supposed to stick out a little bit, what I don't want is like this whole half inch of it sticking out. That would not be good for anything. Before we do anything, let's make extra sure it is actually gonna fit our axle. It's going on pretty stiff. I'm gonna grease it up because it looks like this thing runs in grease its whole life anyway. So it looks like you should actually pack it. All right, so got plenty of grease on it. Let's try this again. There it goes. Yeah, that feels a lot better. Cool. So I mean, it's gonna take a little bit more grease and lube up this o-ring it's got on it. I'm not sure why this thing has so many seals. Although I guess that o-ring is what's going to actually keep the oil in the axle. And then this will be our axle seal, but I don't know why it needs one on the inside too. Like I said, never done one of these before. So it is all new to me. I'm going to go ahead and just grease the bejesus out of the outside of it. With our fancy installation tool here. And I'm going to try and take it pretty easy here. So I really don't want to cock the new one. Of course, they also sell specialized things to do this. I, of course, do not have them. So I'm going to have to regroup on this whole process. I discovered that hitting it with a block of wood was actually my better bet until my wood block split. And when it split, it ripped the seal out and the seal is proprietary. You can't just get a new seal. And it also damaged this race. So this $25 repair bearing is now garbage. So I'm going to do what I knew I should have done which is order the bearing driver tools. And since we're waiting for our removal tool again anyway, that's not gonna hurt. And I'm also not so sure on the design of this particular one, the way it's got that step and the O-ring and everything. I'm not sure if it was actually the correct part for this. So we're gonna try a different one since I gotta buy a different one anyway. The fun never stops. Well, since I've run myself out of parts again, now I have no option but to crawl under the thing and do the pinion seal. I don't know why I don't want to do it so bad. I just don't. This is our re replacement for the wrong one. And it's going to fit on there much, much better. I don't really want to like ram jam it on there. Actually, it'll be going like that. When it's all assembled, put a little bit of oil or some grease or something on it there. Just harvested some of the grease from my destroyed bearing. Why not? She should pop right on. Yep. Nice and tight. More or less what you want. So that guy is going to be our ticket. So now the move is to climb under it with some Loctite for our nut, some silicone for the gasket, tiny hammer to beat it in, I guess. Hammer and punch to peen the nut over when we're done because we can't torque it. Oh, and some anti-seize. We're going to want that too. I totally forgot this old seal was in here. But what I'm going to do here is take this small chisel and just kind of hook it right in the crevices there, the cranny where the gasket flange is. I suppose before we really, really commit. Yep, that's gonna be the same size. Of course, this is always challenging. Get your hands and everything where they need to be and all that good stuff. There we go. That's the plan. Just kind of work that flange up. And as I do that, the gasket will get looser. What we don't want to do is chew up the housing, which I'm kind of doing. You may or may not be able to see because I'm kind of blocking your view, I'm sure. But it's starting to lift out of there the more and the further I go. It's probably another way to do this, but this is the way I've always done it. It looks like it's getting loose enough. I might be able to hit it with my Egyptian brain hook pick here. Kind of try and pry it out of there. Nope. I'm just going to wail on this bottom here a little bit and see if I can get it to turn on out of there. Even if it's coming out cocked, it won't matter. We'll just bend up this old gasket, getting it out. Yep, there she goes. Sweet. Kind of curious to pull that pinion bearing out and take a look, but I genuinely don't want to know. To my surprise, that was RTV'd in. There's some RTV at the top. 
So this has probably been done before because I don't think the factory glues them in, which is surprising that it would fail twice. And here you can see like some of that, I'm calling it sand or whatever, stuff that was down inside the yoke is also still here on the pinion and therefore also still in our differential. If this was something we cared about, that would be a problem. See that buildup of garbage in there around the splines and the bearing? There's like dirt down inside of it. That's not good. I bought like the industrial size thing of gear oil when I was at Tractor Supply. You know, the good, really cheap stuff. So we will probably service this thing pretty promptly after we run it down the road because we're going to break all this garbage loose and there's really no good way to clean it all out. Oh my God, this pinion bearing is roached. Uh, I knew I didn't want to look. Yeah, we're not going to worry about it. Not today. I don't even know if this thing has all the gears in the transmission yet. Rebuilding this garbage rear end is really not on my agenda. Give it another brake clean bath here. And this one, I'm not going to care if I shoot some inside. In fact, I kind of wouldn't mind pushing the stuff on in so we can get it on out. Face full of brake clean. And yeah, now I can just take my glove and just kind of wipe the remaining silicone off. All that dirt and crap or whatever it is that's packed in those splines is still there, which, you know, that's not awesome. Whatever is what it is. Oh, neat. And I washed my white mark off of the pinion, which isn't that big of a deal, but I was kind of hoping to keep it. I've got my seal all gooped up. Not a ton of RTV on it, just some. And again, you can't really use a seal driver or anything here. If you had a gigantic socket, I guess that would work. But seal driver won't work because there's, you know, a pinion in the middle of this thing. And if we can avoid it, we'd really like to not get this thing in here cocked. It does not seem to want to start, though. All right, never mind about not cocking it. Ah, good times, good times. There we go. Finally get her on in there. I won't tell you I didn't bend the crap out of it doing it. So it may leak uh, just as bad as it did before. We tried. Just going to wipe our excess down. And then I'm going to go around it with a punch. Just to make sure it's actually down. Seated all the way. Feels like it probably is, but it will not hurt to double check. So it's hard for you to see, but that's a punch. It's about a 10 inch long punch. Yeah, like up at the top, that wasn't all the way down. In fact, it... Just squirted a little bit of silicone out. Yeah, that feels nice and solid. Go back and wipe our excess down again. I have got a problem. I did not retain my white mark on anything other than probably the nut, which honestly, I'm not even sure it's down here right now. So, so much for my plan of lining everything up. What I'm gonna just end up doing is pretty much what I've always done in the past, which is just get it snug, I guess. It is what it is. One thing I'm definitely going to wanna do Let's get some anti-seize on these splines because, you know, 30 years from now when somebody restores this thing, they're going to want to be able to get that off of there. Restores it into soup cans, that is. Try to get the mess I just made on the splines off because I want that to have a whole bunch of red Loctite because we're not going to have torque holding this together. We're going to have Loctite doing it. All right, let's get our guy on. There it goes washer. Here comes a gang of red Loctite. We're just going to go no spout. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a lot of red Loctite. It's probably about 30 bucks worth right there. Get our nut. I'm just going to use a ratchet to run this down instead of an impact because I want to feel when it's actually getting tight, like right there. It's actually snug. Good God. Look at all the play in this thing. That is bad. Okay, it wasn't as snug as I thought it was. There, it's getting tighter. Still just several miles of play in it. Yeah, it's, it's getting tight and it's still got a ton of play in it. Yeah, that's bad. You don't want that. That is no good at all. I'm hesitant to do this, but I'm going to put a little more torque on it because this thing is so freaking loose. I think it's actually going to be dangerous to drive on it. Okay, there's no way that I'm not down on the crush sleeve there. 
Wow. That is just hot garbage. That's probably why it was leaking so bad because the bearings are just destroyed. Well, that, that's kind of a chicken and egg thing. It is destroyed because it was leaking, but it's going to keep leaking because this is just going to be all over the damn place. Yeah, I see no actual harm in continuing to tighten that thing up and see if we can take some of that slack out. Because what that crush collar actually does is set the, the bearing preload. And as you can see, these bearings uh, are basically have no preload. Oh. Oh, that is for sure up against the crush collar now. So, okay, okay. I may have just been panicking about nothing. The play is coming out of it, which is good. It's still got a little more than I'd like to see. I know, listen to me talking like I know what I'm doing. I've done this a handful of times. I'm no expert by any means. Mm. Okay, well, that is all the tighter it wants to get. I'm really tempted to put like a pipe wrench on this thing to really lock it down so I can put just a little bit more on it because it is pretty freaking loose. Yeah, well, for better or worse, I think that's what's about to happen. You can buy actual tools to hold the yoke for you. I don't have one. What I have is a big friggin' pipe wrench. And it kind of contacts the floor, which is kind of nice. Let's see if it stays that way. Oh, doing the wrong thing. Nur. Ooh. Okay. I'm not putting any more on it than that. Yeah, it actually feels pretty good. Not bad. Ideally, I would like to not be able to hear it clicking. That's not awesome. Uh, usually when you crush a collar down to dimension, you're up to like 300 foot pounds of torque when you do it. We are very clearly not going for that today. So since this thing has got, I don't know, whatever I just put on it, 100 pounds, something, maybe 200. We're gonna make sure this nut is staked nicely so it doesn't back off. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but there's a big flat spot in that guy now. There, I think you can see it down at the bottom there. Uh, I guess now I'm going to put the drive shaft back in it. I will spare you the boring details on that one because it is as simple as it came out, except I'm going to put a little bit of grease or anti-seize in here on those things so it doesn't seize up on me uh, the way it was when we tore it apart. And we are back with more parts and tools. Here are the tools we're going to need. These are for uninstalling the bearing. The idea here is that this guy slides through the hole, comes back and creates a flat. You can tighten that down on the bearing. You thread this guy into your slide hammer and then just pop her on out of there. Obviously never used those, but I've seen them used and they look pretty handy. And these guys are bearing and seal drivers. So the idea is you grab one of these that lines up in size with your bearing. There's our bearing, there's our disc, something like that. Screw a handle onto it and you smack that whole thing with a hammer. And it should be a little easier to get it started straight. Well, we except we'll want to be putting it in the right way, like that. So that is all the next step of our adventure. In addition to screwing up the seal, I actually did pop the bearing a little bit there too. So even if I could get a new seal for that bearing, she's still torched. I'm thinking that it's probably the size we want. I'm also thinking it'll probably be easier to get it threaded in there without the slide hammer in our way. So half right so far. And of course, this being the cheapest tool I could get on Amazon, the threads in this thing are not too terribly good, but I got it to catch oh, probably about a half inch worth earlier. Uh, correction, maybe more like a quarter inch. All right, let's see if this goes smoothly. <laughs> Looks like the same trick as before. It's just going to destroy this bearing the whole way out. <sighs> Neat. I don't know if it's because maybe, I don't know if I could even get uh, the next size bigger in there. Yeah, I'm already kind of chewing up the lip of the tool. I'm not going to tighten it because I want to be able to see it. Yeah, it's just destroying this one on the way out too. Which, you know, I'm less concerned about than trying to get the new one in, of course. All the same, not quite what I was hoping for. But if I've got this bearing super bound up sideways in there, it's probably going to be pretty hard to pull it out. So I'm not too terribly surprised. Uh, right here is the inner seal. I'm just going to try and pry it out of there so it's not in the way of the other tool. And before all these rollers fly everywhere, we'll just preemptively magnet them out of there this time. Or at least most of them. We'll find out if we get them all here in a minute. Now that everything's out of there, I'm going to see if the next bigger size from my kit fits it. Nope. 
<laughs> and neither does this one. And I did just try the next size up on the new bearing and it also does not fit it. So we are stuck with what we have. And of course, of course this kit wasn't sold as being like for exactly this rear end or anything. It's just a universal kit. So just my luck that we get something that's kind of in the middle, right? I think maybe the move is going to be to come in here with the cutoff wheel and slot this thing to see if we can relieve some of the pressure off of it and see if we can get it out of there. This is probably all wishful thinking. That didn't appear to close the gap up at all. Yeah, I mean, there's, what, like another three quarters of an inch of steel behind this thing. So, yeah, probably just wishful thinking. I'll take another bite with the grinder right there and see if I can actually open up a real notch to work with. Well, I believe I just cracked the bearing, which isn't going to help me in the long run, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff, that race is going to be super hard. So when I beat it with a hammer here in a minute, it is probably just going to chip off and go flying. Yep. So that's not going to be a winning plan either. I am beginning to wonder if maybe I did get this thing driven in as far as it was going to before. So it looks like right here, I've just about got it knocked out of there. So I'm just going to try and finish that cut with the Sawzall. So it turns out that bearing is way too hard to try and cut with a saw. So I started taking to it with this cold chisel here, and it's also too hard for that. I was blasting sparks off the end of this chisel. It's all completely dulled now, but I was able to cut through it. And now if I tap it, it at least rotates pretty freely. So I'm hoping that means I can get it jimmied on out of there. And one of the Amazon reviews for this style of bearing said that these are a nightmare to take out. The guy said he worked on it for like four hours and I could definitely see it, if not for like just beating the guts out of the inside of it with the Sawzall first. And we weren't even close to all the way down. Ugh. We have some decisions to make because that went so badly. Oh yeah, and that's all galled up right there. So I'm going to have to sand that out anyway. But anyway, I'm afraid of just spending like another hour screwing with this just to destroy another $25 bearing. Uh, one thing I am for sure going to do is I'm going to put the new bearing in the freezer so we can hopefully get it just a little bit smaller and then maybe we'll try and heat this guy up with a little bit of torch before we put the two together next time. Maybe that'll go easier. But I'm going to have to get in here with my Dremel and clean some of that out. You can probably see right there it's all chowdered up. That's probably when I was hitting it with the cold chisel, which you guys didn't see, but believe me I was. When I was doing that, I was cocking it in the bore, so it was probably tearing that wall on the way in. Shouldn't be a real big deal. I'll just have to smooth that down, try and do something to clean all the chunks out of the inside of it again. I'm going to go get my bearing in the freezer so tomorrow night we can get back to this. And this is the part of the video where I become visibly flustered because I forgot to record stuff. When I say Dremel, I mean my discount knockoff Dremel. That's an 80 grit sanding wheel, and I've shoved a paper towel up in there. I've already gotten started a little bit here, but there's still just a touch more like right there that I'm going to keep working on. Give it a little more RPM. And paper, you'd have to be here. Look at lady. Okay, so that feels smooth now. So there's still just a little bit more, but you guys get the idea. Uh, going around the inside of it here, uh, with, even with 80 grit sandpaper, you'd have to do this for about 300 years before you would open this up enough to really hurt anything. I'm just trying to get it cleaned up so I know there aren't any burrs that could you know, hold us up and cock the bearing. And I also want to kind of give this every chance I possibly can because this is my first experience with these repair bearings. And if I fail twice, it will be my last experience with them. Would not be the first time that something that works fine for someone else does not work fine for me. You know, be it I'm not smart enough to use it or whatever. So just the following day, I've painted the flange that the bearing's supposed to set up against white with a paint marker. 
just so I have some feeling of how far away I am, I, I do still understand that this style of bearing isn't supposed to sit flush with the axle tube the way the original seal would, that there is supposed to be some amount of stick out, but I'm pretty sure it is supposed to set flush down on that flange, so I just want to be able to keep an eye on that. I've also greased the bejesus out of the tube to help installation and to help us hopefully keep from tearing the o-ring that is the actual oil seal. And I give this some additional thought, and I actually shouldn't torch heat this. Uh, for one thing, then the grease wouldn't be a very good idea. But the other reason is that if I got this too hot, I could damage the o-ring on the way in and melt it and then just immediately have a severe oil leak. So that is not something I am interested in doing. I actually thought about RTVing it in because the RTV until it sets would actually act as a lubricant too. But if this doesn't work, I don't want to tear out this heaps of RTV. I have my driver tool lined up and ready to go. Time to go get the bearing out of the freezer and time there will be of the essence because just handling it, it'll start heating up. There's our guy. think we might have better luck already. It already felt a little better. That sounds solid. I believe it was. Oh, and since the seal is in here, I of course can't see the paint line I just made, but that looks solid AF. Uh, the stick out, I would say is probably, probably an eighth to a 16th inch smaller than it was before, which is all good news. While it's still cold, I'm just going to Schwack it again, just to be sure. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna say she's in. I'm gonna let that warm up to temp and pack it with a bunch more grease because this is now a sealed wheel bearing, just like a front wheel bearing would be. Then we're gonna blast this thing back together, which I'm really looking forward to because I'm basically a week behind because of all this kind of shenanigans. Now that hopefully that part of the project's behind us, I'll give you a little micro review of the tools I bought for it. Uh, Cause I'll never use this stuff in 10 lifetimes more than I really have today. This might get used a few dozen more times before I croak off. So these are cheap tools for guys at home, but I do like them. Uh, the problem I have is the small adapter of this kit is too small for a GM 10 bolt and the next size up is too big. So if I need this tool again for another 10 bolt, what I'll probably do is buy another of these kits or see if maybe I can just get the constituent pieces even cheaper. I think each of these was like 25 bucks. They were pretty cheap, but I will get another kit and take the next size up and just grind it down until it fits a 10 bolt properly. And I don't fault the tool for that. This is a universal tool. Universal means doesn't do anything perfectly. And of course it didn't. This guy, however, just perfect. Uh, no real issues. I've been kind of wanting a kit like this for a long time. Uh, there's no real witchcraft here. These are just aluminum discs, aluminum handle you bolt them to and you whack them with a hammer. But on both of these, yeah, uh, definitely would buy again, even though this didn't quite work out perfectly for me. That's just this job, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, so our next item up for bids is to actually get the differential reassembled. You can see this pile of gears laying down in there. Don't be alarmed by that. Those are the side gears. That's what the axles actually go into. And with the carrier pin removed, the pin that went in that hole, there's nothing that retains those once you pull the axles out. So they fall out all the time, no big deal. And I've also flooded this whole tube with brake clean, like an entire can, just to push all this crap uh, down the differential, hopefully, and get it out of there. I have full confidence that this rear end is just garbage, 100%. So I'm not too terribly worried about destroying it, but I am going to take the precautions I can take while I'm here. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count the teeth up on all this stuff, just so if I go junkyard shopping for a new, to me, rear end, I know what ratio I need because over the course of like 30 years, uh, anybody could have done anything to this thing. You don't have any clue. Anyway, side gear time. That is an axle side gear. You can see it's spline on the inside for the axles. And these are the guys that go on the top and the bottom. Shouldn't really matter where they go. But anyway, you can see we've still got one side gear in there. Our goal here is to try and, you know, fish the other three back in. I'm wondering if we have a bigger window on the other side. Should make life just a little bit easier. Our top and bottom guys have thrust washers on them, but make sure that you've got them. I thought there was a trick here where you just like rotated these in. When I put this other one in, it'll want to drive this bottom one out if I don't like turn them. I don't know if you can see what I'm saying or not, but as I'm trying to push the top one in, the bottom one is coming out. Let's see if I can sort of do this to my advantage. There we go. Yeah. That's wrong. I'm just kind of kicking it around a tooth at a time. 
I'm not sure if this is the, you know, the right way to do this or not. Oops. I'm not sure if this is the right way to do this or not, but you know, these gears need to be straight across from each other so that pin can go in, of course. What's going on here is the rearward gear has kind of fallen in the window on the other side of the carrier and got caught up. I may have even got those assembled correctly. Let's grab our pin and find out. Yep, I think we're good. We're just gonna check and make sure that we're lined up. Oh no. We off by like a tooth. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Which way was I off? Okay, so that needs to come down like a tooth. Way too far. I got to got it. Yes, sir. That's what we want to see. I'm just going to put the pin in temporarily just so nothing falls out of position while we're doing the rest of our cleaning and such. First thing I'm going to do is come down here at this drain spot thing and run my magnet in there about a bazillion times and try and get any metal chunks out that I can. This is actually a return channel up to the top of the pinion. Usually it is. The oil will sling and go up over the pinion and through the housing and then drain back out of the bottom. Yeah, we got a bunch of crap there. To my surprise, I actually did not get all that much metal out of it, which is good. I have hosed this thing down with a couple cans of brake clean already. So we should have rinsed some of this crap out by now, anyhow. Oh, good time to mention, if you have a limited slipper end, this is probably not an awesome idea to just go to town like this. Uh, this thing is such a pile of garbage, even if it was an LSD, I wouldn't worry about it because the clutches in it would probably be roasted anyway. Oh no. One of my freaking side gear shims came out. So now I need to guess which one it was. We'll finish cleaning it up and then I'll put this back in. You guys don't need to be bored with three hours of me doing this. I'm going to take my suction gun and get down here in the base of this thing. I've just got a little piece of brake hose on it. And we're going to suck out all the stuff we can, all the grimies. And that'll continue to drip and evaporate and stuff for a little while. Might uh, end up doing it again here in a minute, but you get the idea. I'm now going to fix my mistake and get this thrust washer put back in. But I suppose on the way we could count teeth and determine our ratio. So I'm just going to paint a tooth white so I know where I started and this paint won't hurt anything. I'm going to do the same thing in here on the pinion. And to determine our gear ratio, we're going to take this number of teeth divided by the number of teeth on the pinion. 41 teeth on our ring gear. On the pinion, I got 12. 41 divided by 12. 341. That sounds like kind of a weird gear ratio. I think maybe I'm going to count again just to be sure. 41. So it's a 341 or 342 gear ratio. I think it was 341.6, so 342s. I'm not used to V6 GM stuff, so that might be a, a ratio that makes sense. I don't know. Let's get this guy put back in, and we'll catch up when that's done, because then it will be axle time, which I'm very happy about. So I've already got the passenger side in. It was no big deal, because all we did was change the seal. On this side, since this is now a sealed bearing, I'm just going to grease the bejesus out of the thing, because extra grease isn't going to hurt anybody. Just gonna pack it right full. All right, here comes the time to be nervous. Uh, the reason for nerves here is because if the install depth of this bearing isn't right, I won't be able to get the C-clip back on the axle. So if it holds the axle out too far, we're screwed. That seal is right up on the flange of the axle. Piss, that was stupid. I just turned the thing without all the pieces in it and one of the side gears fell out. So I'll be under there fixing that for a few minutes. So I got our side gear situation taken care of. What you're looking at right there, the shiny part would be the new bearing that's sticking out a little bit extra. And then if I can get some white just right, just where the axle crowns, I think right there you'd be able to see it, just where it starts to make the radius, where it turns out into the hub, that's what's pushing up against the seal. So I think we're going to be okay out here. 
Let's go underneath and see if we can get a C-clip on. It looks like it might be a little bit closer than stock, but the answer appears to be yes. We got a C-clip on a magnet here. I'm just going to try and get it up in here and slipped in. Oh man, is it like just like uber, uber close, but not quite? Nope, it's in. All right, cool. And when I pushed it over, that keeps the C-clip in there until we put the cross pin in. So although it took me two tries because I've never done it before and I will never feel bad about learning from a mistake, this is still an economical option here because a new axle and all that stuff, I actually found a pretty good deal on Summit and they would have been like 130 bucks a side by the time it was done. Whereas now that I know how these work, they're 25 bucks a side. If this thing was not quite such a garbage scowl, just rust dumpster, I would probably have spent the money like on the Jeep, if it needed this, I would for sure about just buy new axles. But for this piece of junk, I think this is a reasonable way to go. Especially since I don't even know the condition of the rest of the vehicle yet. This thing came to me in a condition in which I would not drive it. What you're actually looking at here is a byproduct of trying to fix the brakes. Just FYI, this teeny tiny little bolt is all that keeps your wheels on in the rear end. If this bolt comes out or breaks, that cross pin can come out. The C-clips can drop off and the axle, the brakes, and your tire, wheel, everything will just be headed off the vehicle. So for that reason, I'm going to take a quick minute and clean this guy up with a little bit of brake clean. And I am going to blue Loctite it before I put it back in the carrier. And I was just thinking, hey, there's no reason we can't just go ahead and put the rear cover back on it too. Except I can't find the freaking gasket. Uh, you got to love it when these projects take like two weeks instead of a uh, Saturday. Then you forget all that kind of crap. So let's just start eliminating things and we'll start putting parts back on it. And eventually the parts we can't find will appear. I'm growing more fond of these Loctite sticks. And this one's like a Loctite gel stick. It's just super handy for instances like this. I'm sure there is a torque spec for this thing from GM, but that's a 5 16 head. This bolt's job isn't to be the retaining pin. It's just supposed to retain the pin. So I'm not going to fret over it too much. Yeah, if I had to guess, I would say the torque spec for this is in inch pounds. So something really tiny. <clears throat> All right, that's pretty tight for a bolt that size anyway. And that pin is, you know, of course, still super loose. I don't know if that's normal or not. I'm going to say probably not, but uh, nothing we're going to do about it today. Sure enough, just need to quit looking for it for a few minutes. It was the second place I looked after that. Anyhow, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Normally, with these like regular, we'll call them paper, cork, whatever style gaskets, I glue them on. So I use stuff called high tack and actually glue them on on both sides, and they never ever ever leak. But they're also, you know, kind of a pain to clean up. And since I am super confident we are going to be in this thing again real soon, what I'm going to do with this one instead is grease both sides of it and hopefully it will still seal. It should make it much, much easier to clean up in probably a few hundred miles when we tear this thing down to uh, rebuild the rear end probably. Or if we get another one out of the junkyard or whatever, that's fine. So nothing special, just the same grease we just used on the bearing a moment ago. I'm just going to wipe both sides of the gasket down and then we're going to bolt this cover back on and fill this thing with oil and uh, try to drink this whole project off our minds. Speaking of things I would normally do, I would normally not let the rust that's on that housing just stay like that, but uh, I don't care. It is time to get this thing out of the garage. So you can probably see that guy is pretty well greasy. I'm going to just put three in it just to hold it there. Keep the gasket nicely lined up for us. And since my hands are all covered in grease anyway, I'm just going to smear it all over this super rusty rear cover that I did actually try and clean up some just to make sure it didn't have any holes in it. The grease will soak in and slow down some rust maybe. These guys buzz in a little bit. There we go. All tightened up, sealed up, ready to roll. Just got to put oil back in it. Fun stuff. So I've probably made about a half dozen videos now where I actually show you guys me filling stuff up under a vehicle from under the vehicle. So I'm going to save you the trouble this time. I'm just going to show you how I do it. This is a pressure bleeder for brakes. So the idea here is you would put brake fluid in this and then attach it to the top of your master cylinder, pump it up, and it creates pressure and pushes fluid down through your braking system. 
Well, it will also push any other fluid. And today it's gonna to push this cheapest I could get at Tractor Supply gear oil into my differential. <laughs> this stuff was 25 bucks for two gallons. I bet by the time we're done with this whole thing, this thing will end up using this whole bottle. By the time we figure out gremlins in the front end and everything else, we'll, we'll probably go through it all. So we're gonna put some of this and some of that and then put that in the truck. And then we're gonna put the fill plug in when it starts running out and we're done. And that is exactly what happened. It took exactly the two quarts that it should have taken, at least from what I looked up on the internet. So all good. I also took the opportunity to hit it with some brake clean to rag and just clean all that old oil off the side of it. So if this thing starts leaving dribblings, we'll know it's new stuff and not old stuff. Got one more trick up my sleeve before we call it a day. And that next trick is this. That guy is a rare earth magnet that's supposed to be a 245 pound straight pull. I promise you it isn't because I would not be able to do that. But it is pretty freaking gutsy regardless. This is an off-road mud tire that has probably 50% tread remaining. And it's actually strong enough that it can pick up the steel belts inside it and hold itself onto the tire, which is crazy. An installation is gonna look a lot like this. Oh yeah, she's on there pretty firmly. I may end eventually take a zip tie and just wrap it around the sway bar just in case we hit a huge bump and that wants to drop off, but I think she'll be okay. So guys, that is gonna conclude our ghetto rebuild of this rear axle, or you know, rebuild, rebuild, reseal, whatever of this rear axle. Uh, she's been sitting here for a few days and I don't see any drips or anything, so I think we've got mission accomplished on that one. But I'm sure we'll be back here soon enough in the future. But until that day comes, I appreciate you guys stopping in and we'll catch you on the next one.